Thank you so much, you stressed pirate. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Of, I'm having fun with names today. Uh, let's talk about the game. I think fairly convincing for Rocket. Um, they punished Copenhagen Wolves Academy for some of the decisions that the Wolves Academy are doing. But I want to go back to picks and bands. I like putting Woolite on a tank because yeah. he plays like a tank. So let's actually take a look at the two team compositions really quickly. And one of the weaknesses of Rocket was Woolite's positioning and getting caught out. When you're an Urgot, you don't care because you want to be in that position. You want to right. be in the thicker things. So you can get in and you can swap the LeBlanc in the late game anyway. So that worked fine for them. But the pick and ban pairs here, the really surprising thing for us was the LeBlanc pick coming in for Cosq because Lula had already been shown, which is a great matchup into LeBlanc to just basically make it a farm lane and you don't really have any kill pressure on her. And you had already seen like Hecarim, Sejuani, like you knew these big tanks were coming. So LeBlanc at like 30 minutes just run out of options. There's nobody she can really assassinate. So it meant there early game for Copenhagen was Academy, as we talked about, what's going to be about can we snowball our lane so well through the LeBlanc that we can now have a roam between lanes and get the Jax fed and then get the Lucian fed. Otherwise, we're simply going to fall so far behind composition-wise in the team fights. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the story of the game. In the beginning, we see a very heavily early game concentrated team composition with Rek'Sai, Jax, LeBlanc, Lucian. Um, going there for like early mid-game split push later on, um, didn't really get rolling. The Jacks against the Hecarim didn't work out. They didn't get the snowball rolling. Kirei was stranded in the bottom side of the map for a longer time. Yeah. And at this point, you just didn't have a lead to snowball anymore. That was really a big deal, how the jungle focus from Copenhagen was Academy in the early game, while they, while they were pushing the bottom lane, was still there. Kirei walked down to look at a lane that was being pushed into the tower of Rocket, while this no flash Hecarim is running around top lane on his own, like that should be the focus for him because you know that Jax can snowball. We saw the trades later on when the Trinity Force and Blade of the Ring King was completed for Mosu. He could beat the Hecarim one on one. That was going to be one of the ways for them to play it. And obviously, the whole idea behind the comp, not go down bottom lane and try and get Lucian ahead in the start. That's just super weird for me. But it's something where I feel like Kirei has often shown that he struggles when it comes to finding the right place on the map. Yeah, and it's something you actually mentioned right in the very first moment of talking about Copenhagen Wolves Academy. In lane swaps and situations and scenarios, uh, CWA demonstrated against Origin they weren't making the right decisions. This particular game, they didn't fall be uh, behind as far as they did against Origin as the gold was pretty even for a long time. What did you think of the rest of the mid game? Once the laning phase started ending and we started seeing Rocket grouping for some objectives and Copenhagen Wolves trying to play a little bit of the split push. I mean, we, we got to see uh, how Rocket at first were either trying to get a kill and then being like, okay, we have, we've already set up the other waves to push the other way. So there's no real like objective for Wolves Academy to take. They did try a few times to trade like tower for it, which was okay. The problem was that it was so easy for Rocket to just decide, okay, we slow push top lane now. We can see the wave come entire time into the tier two tower and just walk up with four guys. And Wolves Academy just never reacted. They just sat back in their own lanes. I'm not sure what they were looking for, yeah. but there was just some very easy free towers for Rocket that just made it impossible. Luckily, we do actually have Rocket backstage talking about that uh, game one win. So we should be able to catch a glimpse of that. Uh, a little bit more relaxed than we saw from Reason Gaming earlier in the day. Remember, Yamato joined the squad. Sheepy, if you were looking at the team, what do you think? I think that's pretty much what I would imagine them right now. They didn't do too many mistakes. They had a more to mid to late game composition and they played yeah. it fairly well. And they just had a win from there on out. And I think that Komei Wolves a little bit ended up without any kills and didn't really know what to do. And chasing kills and doing a lot of well, stuff. Well, let's actually pull the replay up and talk oh, yeah. about that. Um, you know, over, uh, Nuketuck was able to pull so much focus from the Wolves Academy. Take a look at the mini-map and maybe Sheepy Deficio, what was your take on this, this, this play? So what you see here is uh, the Jax dueling out with the Hecker and see the Lulu coming, then the Rek'Sai comes as well. And what they try to do here is trying to go for the kill, don't go for the kill, then suddenly they see the Lulu out of position and this is a free kill. And meanwhile, why are they chase down the kill? Yeah. They don't get the idea that maybe somebody is missing here. I mean, I can accept that Unicorns of Love can make plays like this <laughs> and still win games, but for Copenhagen was Academy, because they're already behind, this is just such a solo queue play, honestly, because the Baron gets taken. Nukeduck dies in the very end after Baron goes down. And the worst thing is, Wolves Academy had a ward. You can see it right here on your screen. It was outside the Baron pit. They also didn't see the rest of the members for such a long time, so they knew they were on Baron. Yet two guys were sitting in mid lane being like, should we go kill Lulu or should we go Baron's? Like, they didn't really know where to go and everyone was still chasing these Lulu in the bottom. Like, 
That's what you do in solo queue when you value a kill over a Baron. But it was the same kind of place that happened for Wolves Academy so often. And that's why we say they are this team here who needs to win the early game really hard and snowball from there. Because in terms of strategy and, and like shot calling, they're just not on the same level as some of the other teams. And I think that was actually a great opportunity for Koma Wolves Academy to come back. They have the Rek'Sai, they have the Jax, Jax had TP. Yeah. They can easily so double TP win. There were three people on Baron. They got super low as well. So. Lulu was stuck bottom lane, no way for her to join. And suddenly you have a 4v5 situation where you can maybe even get that Baron for yourself. Like that's one of these quick calls we have to be able to make to punish if, if Rocket makes a mistake like this, or not a mistake, but a play like this. Wolves Academy just didn't do it and just figured, let's just get that Lula down and, and that one, it. one more thought before we wrap this one up. Copenhagen Wolves Academy will be on the red side in game two. They elected to play red side for their respective games. That's games two and four. Sheepy, one thought after seeing the comps and the picks and bands and knowing Copenhagen Wolves Academy reliance on the early game, what's your take on them coming into game two on red side with the ability to counter pick considering how picks and bands went in game one? Um, I think that's a strength for them because they should play over the stronger lanes. And if they have that possibility to get the better pick for the mid lane and maybe snowball over it, I think yeah. that is probably the way we can see them winning a game. Well, we'll have to find out if it does work out because, as I mentioned, we do need to step away from a moment. And when we return, it will be game two between the Copenhagen Wolves Academy and Rocket. Don't go anywhere. Oh, baby. I feel that my mouse is at the end of my hand, you know? <laughs> It's like my hand. It's connected with my brain and body. There is going to be the Glacial Prison. He's going to be going down, but Vander could be the one to follow. Tanking up the tower shots, he does. It's a one-for-one -one trade. He does get the ult. He does have some serious damage. In comes Jankos and Vander, but do they have enough to follow up? His overpower slays hybrid. He does manage to pick that one up. Let's get the trash. Get the trash. Get the trash. Let's block, let's block, let's block. Go Max, go, go Kirei, Kirei, Kirei. It's uh, okay, uh, go I slow? Okay. And they're only two away from retaining their LCS spot in the summer.